Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to explain to you what it is a DynamoDB. I'm going to describe the key concepts related to DynamoDB and finally I will show you a small demo of how to interact with DynamoDB through AWS console. So keep watching. DynamoDB is fast and flexible NoSQL database service. It's created by Amazon and it's accessible only in the AWS cloud. It's fully managed and serverless database. The Dynamo has a neat pricing model. You only pay for the real usage, no hidden costs. DynamoDB is built for heavy load applications. In contrast to traditional relational databases, performance of DynamoDB does not decrease when load becomes bigger. For example, Amazon itself uses DynamoDB for its online shop. DynamoDB supports both key value and document data models. In fact, the model is really flexible. You have to only define the hash key, which is equivalent to primary key in relational databases. The DynamoDB is a great choice for applications having really high volume of data. It scales infinitely. You don't have to think about any partitions or nodes. You just save the data. Good to know thing is that DynamoDB always stores a data on SSD hard drives. Next is the serverless app, so you can focus on what's matter the most. You can focus on developing your app. There is no need for Dynamo software updates, patches, version changing and so on. The Dynamo also integrates very well with other AWS serverless services like mm, AWS Lambda functions. There is a DynamoDB feature called DynamoDB Streams. It works similarly to relational database triggers. It triggers a specific Lambda function when an item is added, updated or removed in DynamoDB. Another awesome feature of DynamoDB is its data replication. By default, the data is saved to three geographically distinct data centers. So chances that the data will be lost are almost equal to zero. If you have a global app, you can also create a global table. Then the data will be replicated across different AWS regions. The DynamoDB is also a very secure database system. You have customizable traffic filtering feature, threat detection or advanced system of notifications and reposting. Great, that's a good start. But to move forward, you have to learn more about DynamoDB data modeling. The basic building block of DynamoDB data model is table. In the Dynamo, all data is kept in the tables. However, it's slightly different from relational systems. There are no relations between the tables of DynamoDB at all. For Dynamo, each row from the table is called an item. The most important thing is that each item has to have defined the hash key. Sometimes it's called a partition key. The names are used interchangeably. DynamoDB system uses hash keys in the internals to determine the physical partition where to save the actual data. Besides that, it is super important property of the item because we have to use it in our queries. Another must to know property is a sort key sometimes called a range key. Again, those two names are used interchangeably. Sort key is used internally by DynamoDB to sort items with the same hash key. For us, it's useful property because we can use it in the queries. The hash key and the sort key together create the primary key of the item. The primary key identifies uniquely the item inside the table. It means that no other item in the table can have the same primary key. To have a valid primary key, the only hash key part is required. We can omit the setting of the sort key. There are cases when we don't need a sort key. The types of the hash key and the sort key are set at the time of table creation and cannot be changed during the lifetime of DynamoDB. But I have told you that the DynamoDB has flexible schema, haven't I? Yes, it has a flexible schema. You can see it when you look on the rest of the table. 
The rest of the item's properties are called attributes. They are optional. They can have different data types and they can have different schemas. So in DynamoDB, you have the common way of identifying the items, but the rest is up to you. You can create variety of models. To start working with DynamoDB, you have to fully understand how it saves the items. Let's imagine that we have our user's avatar. Let's call it Paul. Paul wants to save some data in our DB. He sends the request to the database server. What will happen then? Then DynamoDB will save this piece of information to three geographically distinct data centers. It secures our data and provides high availability. If one of the data centers go down, there are still two up and running. But this feature comes with the cost. The cost is the time because it takes the time to save the items in the three places. It is crucial to have it in the mind when we think about the reading from DynamoDB. There are two types of read possible, eventual consistent read and strong consistent read. Let's analyze both quickly. Now, let's imagine a situation when Paul is saving its item to the database, but he hasn't finished yet. He's during the process. Now the Adrian is entering the field. He wants to read from DynamoDB. When we have the eventually consistent reads on, there is highly likely that the request from Adrian might reach the not updated yet node. The Adrian will receive the old data. The eventually consistent read is the default, default option for the DynamoDB. It is because they are much faster, but you have to be cautious. Depending on use case, it might not be what you expect from your database system. The second option is strongly consistent read. Let's recap the situation. It starts the same. Paul has started the process of saving, but has not finished yet. Adrian wants to read from the DynamoDB. This time, when Adrian asks Dynamo for the data, Dynamo will wait until it replicates the data to the old data centers. After completing, it returning the result of Adrian's query. This time, Adrian receives the newest data, but the request is much slower because it had to wait for Dynamo to complete the previous action. Now, when you know how DynamoDB saves items, let's say a few words about pricing. In DynamoDB, you are basically charged for a storage you use and the network traffic you produce. There are two new terms you have to be familiar with. Read capacity unit and write capacity unit. The read capacity unit is equal to two eventually consistent reads or one strongly consistent read. The data cannot exceed 4 kilobytes. If the amount of read data is larger, then you will be charged for more capacity units. For writes, the size of one uh, write capacity unit is equal to 1 kilobyte. If your item is larger, you will be charged for more write capacity units. So keep in mind, you will be charged for read capacity units and write capacity units your system consumes. Also, keep in mind that DynamoDB is better optimized for read-rich systems. If you have more writes than reads, DynamoDB might be not the best choice for you. For full details of DynamoDB pricing, please check out the documentation. The last question you may ask yourself is how can I interact with the DynamoDB? The answer is simple. You have three options. You can use the AWS console, AWS CLI, or use the AWS SDK of your beloved programming language. So now, having that knowledge, let's move to the demo and see the DynamoDB in the action. To create DynamoDB table, first we have to find the DynamoDB service. For that, click Services and inside the Databases section, search for DynamoDB. Then you will be redirected to the DynamoDB dashboard. If you don't have any tables yet, you will see a similar website to mine. To get started, you can click here on the Create Table button. 
or you can click tables from the left hand side menu. There is also an option to create new table. So the first parameter we have to fill in is the name of the table. For that video, let's assume we are creating the table for some blog post comments. I will name the table comments then. In the next step, we have to set up the primary key of the table. As we discussed before, primary key have to have a partition key and optionally, it can have a sort key included. I believe now it's a good time to speak about one more important difference between relational and non-relational databases. In traditional SQL systems, we first model our data, then with usage of SQL, we can freely query our tables. The data is optimized to take as little of the space as possible. The NoSQL databases and the specifically DynamoDB has adopted another approach. You have to know your access pattern up front, then you can create the table. So it means that you have to know which fields will be used for the queries. In our example, let's assume that I will search for the comments from a specific user. So as a partition key, I will set a string attribute and I will name it a user. Then I will add a time field with a number type. It will be our sort key. In the next section, you can choose between default and custom settings. I will pick custom ones because I'd like to show you all the options. First, we can pick table class. There is an option for some savings if the data is infrequently accessed, but that's not our case. We will leave the standard option. Then you can decide if you need on-demand capacity model or you need a provisioned capacity. Uh, the on-demand is more flexible, but to stay in free tier, you have to use the provisioned capacity. Next, we have the auto-scaling capacity options for read and write capacity units. By default, the minimum is set to 1 and maximum is set to 10. Finally, we have the last section. Here we can set encryption settings and we can add the tags to our table. That's it. Let's create the table. It will take a while to finish that. Meanwhile, here you can see the status. Great. As you can see, the table is created. When we click on the table name, we will be redirected to the table details. Here we see the general information about our table and its data. There is a section containing tables item summary. Currently, there are no items. Let's add a few. For that, click the Explore Items button. Then click Create Item button. Now we are in the Create Item form. To create the item, we have to add at least the hash key and the range key. So I will add some random email and then for the time I will copy and paste the current timestamp. Next, I will add another items attribute. For that, I have to click on add new attribute button. Here, the list of possible options is much longer. I can pick from a variety of data types. But to me, for the comment attribute, string data type will be just enough. To save the item in the DB, click the create item button. I will add briefly another comment for the same email address. This time, just for showcase, I will add additional parameter to the item. It will be the number of likes. Oh, it seems like I haven't copied the timestamp correctly. It is the same as it was the last time. There cannot be another item with the same key. So let's change the time a little. Cool, now it works. By default, DynamoDB executes the scan on your table. That's why you can see your items in this section. The scan is similar to select asterisk operation in SQL. Okay, but now let's see an example of the query. To query the items, we have to use the hash key of the item. 
Let's click the query button and fill the user's email. Then let's use the range key. I'd like to find comments older than this specific time. When I click the run, I should see only one record. I have searched for that item because I'd like to delete it. To do that, I have to click on the actions button and then after confirming, it will be deleted. Finally, to edit the item, you have to pick it from the list. Click on actions button and click edit item. 